Hey everybody and welcome back to the Dev Marketer channel. Today we are doing an episode, the first inaugural episode of This Week in Web. Now I'm super excited to do this series. This is something I've actually been wanting to do for quite some time. And the idea of this series is basically to cover the big news stories that are relevant to web developers and web anyone that works in the web, marketers, developers, anything like that. Um, the, the topics that you need to know to stay relevant in the space. So I'm calling the series This Week in Web and I wanna cover basically every Friday or Saturday, I wanna cover the week that happened before and hit up all the important stories that I think are relevant that happened that week. Um, for you guys to be smart around the water cooler, to look good in that next interview, or just to stay on top and be better at your jobs. So that is the week in web, and today we're going to be covering the first week of October that, and uh, see what happened this week in the world of the web. Now our first story of the week is about Google. Google always had this thing called the Google trick. So for those of you guys that know this, um, if you ever found an article that was on like the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times and you went to it and you didn't have the um, a subscription for them, it would say, hey, you can't view this article, you need to pay and sign up. Well, for many of the people that didn't know, you could actually like copy the headline of the article, go over to Google, paste it into the search box. You know, the article will pop up in the first resu result of Google. You could click on the result and then it would take you through to the website this time without the paywall. It won't, it'll let you read the whole article. Now the reason for this was basically for an SEO advantage, um, the, the advertisers had to um, show the whole article to Google so they could read it. So if someone came from Google, then they, um, they could read the whole article. So these were some of the guidelines that Google previously had and they have completely gotten rid of those and they've provided some new syntax, some new ways for advertisers to have paywalled content that they don't wanna distribute through um, from people clicking through on Google. And so this is a good thing for advertisers um, or publishers mainly I should say. Uh, publishers are really happy with this, but it does mean for you and I that the trick of uh, pasting that headline in Google to read any article is now gone. So um, anyway, you guys can read more about this. I think it's really, really interesting. There, um, There's a great article from Bloomberg that goes into it. Uh, be sure to check it out for more information. Now this one's a fun one. You guys are all familiar with Shopify. Shopify is the kind of drag and drop e-commerce um, website builder in the space and Shopify has released now an open source framework for draggable content in HTML. So this now is a, um, it's a modern drag and drop library. It has tons of cool features and it might be something if you've got an application that requires drag and drop in your next website, it might be one that you wanna check out. Check out. As you look here, you can see that there are tons of adva very advanced features that you can work with here. Um, it's got all the basic uh, drag and drop capabilities. It's got the ability to swap things in and out of sets, to sort items, um, and to uh, detect collision with items, um, auto scrolling. It's a pretty jam packed library. It's something that I'm personally going to take a look at for some of my next projects. I actually just integrated a drag and drop library. I used um, Sortable. Uh, Sortable.js is what I used. And uh, that's kind of one of the leaders right now. And uh, this one looks really, really cool. I've already implemented that, unfortunately, the other one I worked with. But um, this looks like a really advanced library that you may wanna check out. So again, it comes from our friends over at Shopify, and you definitely may wanna check this out for your next project. If nothing else, their landing page for it is pretty darn cool. Um, it gives you a lot to play with, and um, I definitely ch uh, recommend going down Check, taking a look at it, playing around with some of the samples that they've gotten, just so you know what it's capable of. And if you have a project in the future that might need some of those features, I definitely try to play around with it. All right, for any of you guys out there using React and Microsoft Office, Microsoft Office has a user interface library called Fabric. It's called My Office UI Fabric. And uh, this user interface is kind of similar to like other, like Apple's design guidelines and, or human design guidelines. And then their um, Google's got their material design guidelines. This is Microsoft's version of it for all of their products. It's called the uh, Office UI Fabric. Anyway, these UI, this UI framework, uh, Microsoft recently released 
React components for all of their um, for their user interface components. So you can actually go now and get the actual React components for all these. You can see that there's tons of stuff from dialog boxes, color pickers, combo boxes, um, navigation elements, uh, pivot tables, just tons and tons and tons of stuff on here. And these are all prepackaged React components. So they currently have AngularJS and they've got React components. No word yet on Vue.js, hopefully that does come soon. But if you are using React, this could be a really uh, good thing to use with your Microsoft. Um, obviously for any Microsoft components you might build, but you can use this outside of Microsoft of course as well. So it's another fun thing to take a look at. Up next, our buddies over at Dropbox have redesigned their logo and their branding and it kind of caught Twitter by storm this week. Um, everybody's talking about it. I actually really do like their new logo. Um, their new logo is just kind of a simplified version of, I always thought their other, uh, uh, their other logo was quite ugly. So the new logo is pretty sleek. I like it. It's nice and clean. But the colors... I'm not so sure, guys. Um, be sure to take this look at this. They've got a really cool website showing kind of how you would use it um, that I think is worth it a look at for nothing else. And um, you'll see they've got some pretty interesting color combinations in here that is uh, everyone is kind of laughing at, and I think there's good reason to do so. Um, some of these color combinations are pretty hideous, uh, but they're pretty proud of their of their logo, and um, just kind of wanted to point it out that. This is something that is definitely changing. Um, I think though that Dropbox has kind of gone on the deep end here. Now I just wanted to point this out because um, these types of big design changes are always noteworthy in the community. Everyone talks about them. They tend to spark controversy and uh, stuff like that. And I found this one to be one of the most interesting implementations of a new design, uh, new branding design that I've seen all year. So I wanted to point it out just so you can guys can kind of go look, laugh, enjoy, whatever you want to do with it. Um, I thought it was interesting. If you guys are fans of using Postgres, Postgres has finally released version 10 of their database platform. So you can take a look at the release notes. They've got tons and tons of new releases coming. The most notable for me was the fact that um, you can now search JSON natively inside of a column. That's a pretty powerful feature. They've got tons of stuff with logical replication and um, better query parallelism and stuff like that. Tons of kind of advanced features in this in this release. So there's a ton of stuff. This is Postgres 10 is now a stable release and it's something you may wanna check out, especially for those of you guys that use and rely on Postgres. Now, once again, let's talk about Microsoft. Microsoft is releasing iOS and Android versions of their new Edge browser. So they're competing in the space with Google Chrome and um, obviously Apple's Safari to produce a web browser that works on mobile. And this is kind of their, it, this is their attempt at bringing the Edge browser, which is often mocked and laughed at, trying to bring it up to the likes of Firefox and Chrome and Safari to be a more modern browser. And I think part of that is really important to be a mobile browser as well. They've got some interesting new features you may wanna look at if you kind of use Edge both on your desktop and on your mobile, a lot of synchronization features and um, stuff like that. They also have this new thing called the Microsoft Launcher, which is going to be native on Android that you can download. The web browser space is getting really competitive right now. And so this was a really interesting attempt from Microsoft to try to get involved in that space. So speaking of web browsers and the space getting very fierce, Firefox is throwing its hands into the ring with its most advanced update to date. So they're calling this update because it's such a big update. They're calling it Firefox Quantum. They've given it its own name. They're saying it's the fastest browser that is going to be available, uh, bar none. So they're saying it's gonna be faster than Chrome, faster than Safari. Um, it's their biggest change ever. They've basically rebuilt the architecture from the ground up that underlays under the browser. So supposedly the, the actual like underlaying framework is just so, fast and powerful and secure. And they're really, really proud about it. It's twice as fast. Um, it uses 30% less memory than Chrome. And that's a big thing because many people that um, are critics of Chrome say that. And I, I, can, I use Chrome and so I can attest to that, that Chrome is a memory hog. It tends to put everything in your RAM and it, it eats up your RAM. You need 
If you don't have a, a very high RAM computer, you'll notice the um, the effects on it, that Chrome runs much slower. So Chrome is very reliant on RAM, and they're saying that this uses 30% less RAM than Chrome, which alone is pretty interesting. Now it's got a brand new cool design. Um, they're calling it an intelligent design. Um, it looks really good. It looks nice and clean and simple, which I like. I don't think web browsers should be in your face. I think they should be behind the scenes. They should kind of fall away and the web experience should be front and center. So I do like that when web browsers kind of put the web, um, the web experience front and foremost and keep everything else simple and just there when we need it. So the release of Firefox Quantum is coming out mid-November, November 14th, 2017. So if you guys are interested in checking it out and knowing when it becomes available immediately, of course we will mention it on This Week in Web. It will be, we will uh, notify you when it comes out, but you can actually sign up to be notified directly from Mozilla. This has nothing to do with me. You go to their website, the link's down in the description. You can put your email in and be signed and be notified when it becomes available to the public. All right, so that concludes this week in web. We covered all the hottest stories from this week, the first week of October, as are relevant for you guys as web developers, web marketers, and so forth. So I wanna leave you guys with each week with one last thing that's just kind of fun and not necessarily as informative, something you guys can share or just sit back and enjoy. And this week it is called WinPhone 95. So anyone that used Windows 95, you're gonna get, this will be a lot of fun. You'll be like going down memory lane here. But they basically, someone mocked up a kind of a, a pretend phone as if we had an iPhone-like device back with Windows 95. So you can see some of the old Windows 95 um, interface elements. You can see the chunky buttons, kind of the yellowish manila cover, colored uh, plastic and so forth. Um, they make some jokes with the camera being 1.2 megapixels because that's what, you know, really good cameras were like 1.2 megapixels back then. Um, you know, they had they show the web browser with how it, the, the menu at the top takes up like half the screen and stuff like that. Um, anyway, I, th I found this a lot of fun just to kind of go down memory lane. There is the trackball feature, which was a big for Windows laptops a while ago. They've got like uh, ports for like uh, the printer serial ports and stuff like that, a full ethernet port and stuff inside. Anyway, I just found this whole thing very, very fun and interesting. I want to share it with you guys. I want to leave you guys off each week on This Week in Web. I want to leave you with one last thing that's just kind of fun, not as informative, just something I found this week that was interesting. So that sums up the articles for this week. If you guys found this informative and interesting, please leave a like below. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to subscribe. Let me know also, you can leave a comment. Let me know what you think of the series, if you guys want to keep seeing it or not. I hope you guys do enjoy it. I want to keep it to like around 10 minutes each week of just kind of the big topics. So it can be something just to kind of wrap up your week, make sure you heard about everything and um, you know, let you know about something that you might have missed. So hopefully that is something that interests you guys. Don't worry, we're still going to be doing the other series. Um, I just want to kind of break it up, um, break break this up a little bit so I'm not always doing coding related tutorials and start getting some other content in here. So hopefully this is something that you guys can find value out of. Thanks so much for tuning in and I am going to see you guys next week in This Week in Web.